Psalms 42, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? So we see in the first verse, he talks about a heart. A heart is a male deer. Uh, it has uh, stages of male deer. And uh, we're in uh, Heinz, you get the female deer. It's a single heart, may weigh as much as 300 pounds. Six prong antlers, it, it's, and they're shed annually. And uh, the habitat of the heart differs from the gazelle as the heart has, uh, he's got to move uh, for water. So the heart is a male deer, and he is panting after water brooks. He's running. He's running. Uh, he's either being chased, or he's just ate, and now he needs water. Uh, you got to have water. Nothing will satisfy your thirst more than water. Uh, Coca-Cola ain't going to do it. Dr. Pepper ain't going to do it. You got to have water. Uh, during World War II, when uh, they opened up them uh, constant, uh, uh, the camps, and uh, them uh, people were weighing in the 70 pounds, 70, 60 pounds, uh, they tried to feed them, and they tried to give them something to eat, and they said, you can't do that. They're stopped, they're, 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 you're killing them because you're overfeeding them. Even though they haven't ate, their stomach was not used to having food. So they had to slowly, they were killing uh, people they were trying to help because they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, the heart has to have water. Uh, someone that's dehydrated. Uh, the last thing they want to do is drink. But you got to have water. And you can tell if your life is full of, uh, if it has water in it or not. Uh, you can tell by the attitude you've had uh, during the week, if it's been a good attitude, great attitude, uh, you've been watered. You've had a lot of good, clean water. You've had a bad attitude all week, uh, you're dehydrated. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're a little cranky. Uh, you, know, um, you know, you don't particularly care for the conditions that you have to put up with. You don't like it. And that's because you're dehydrated. Now, this Bible is, is the living Word of God. Just because you're near the Word of God and near a river and near a lake does not mean you're drinking from that lake or from that river or from that brook. Just because you're right beside it. I, I, we've been living by Lake Houston for almost, I think the lady told me, eight years now is when I bought the house, or got my house renewed, I had three years before that, so we've been there 11 years, and uh, refinanced it, so uh, we got seven to go, and uh, she, she basically said, I've been there for almost 10 years, but I've never taken a drink out of Lake Houston. I've never been on a boat in Lake Houston for 10 years. Do I live by the water? Yes. Is it beautiful by the water? Yes. Have I been swimming in that water in 10 years? No. I ain't done anything. Just because you're near the water, mm -hmm. just because you're in the Bible, does not mean you're getting the water in you. Mm -hmm. You may just be splashing it all over yourself, and you may play in the water. Your mind may play in the water. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're actually drinking the water. You're close. I mean, it's all over. You're wet as can be. I, you know, I got, we got a pool. I go swimming.
but it's uh, one that you got to put chemicals in to keep it nice and clean, and so they put chlorine in it, and you don't want to drink that stuff because it will hurt you. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to drink that water, but when I get out of the water, I'm all wet. But that doesn't mean I have drank. The heart is going to the water brook to do one thing and one thing only. Drink. Does that make any sense? Mm -hmm. Not to get wet. Not to put their feet in the water. Not to have fun. Not to enjoy the scenery. Not to sit down and let's have a little picnic and we're going to sit down right here and enjoy the beautiful water that's you know, the little water brook right here. Now, it's there for one reason and one reason only, and that is to get a cool drink of water. The heart panteth after the water brook. It is breathing hard. Breathing real hard. It's been running. He said, and so panteth my soul after thee, O God. He said, just like the heart has to have that water and drink the water, he said, I have to do the same thing. Now, I believe uh, uh, this was uh, to the chief musicians uh, for the Sons of Korah. And I believe that's who, who the, the psalm is written for. Uh, but you got to pant after God. That means you got to want God, just like a cool drink of water. You actually have to put it inside of you. Well, I'm reading, you know, I'm going to church, and I'm praying, and I'm reading my Bible, and I'm doing all Well, that's great. I'm glad you're near the water. But is any of it getting inside of you? I mean, if it ain't getting inside, what's the use? It's got to go inside. I mean, just because that, that water's right there beside you and you don't drink it, you ought to want to drink it. Amen. So, he, he says, I'm like this uh, heart that's panting after water and needs water. He says, I need you the same way. I need to do the same way. What would you want to do when you're panting for, for, uh, for God? Well, you want to hear preaching. But you just don't want to hear it. You want, you want that preaching to affect you. If it didn't affect you, amen, you know, uh, I, I, I mean, uh, uh, if Sunday morning's message did not help you and did not help your attitude, to let it go from one ear and out the other, you didn't get anything out of it. You didn't drink the water. If all you did was strive this week or had envy or had bitterness and all this other stuff, guess what? Water didn't get inside of you. You heard you heard a good water message. The, I mean, the waterfalls were, were, were on and, and you could see the waterfalls coming down and, and there is a lagoon and there is the water and there's plenty of it. You're playing in the water, but you ain't drank one sip. So you remained the same. Didn't affect you. Now I got some of that dirt off of it. Mm -hmm. but it ain't going inside deep down inside your soul. It's got to get in your soul. That water has to go deep down in your soul or just because you hear preaching, it will not help you. Just like the heart has to pant for the water brooks, so panteth my soul after the old God. He's panting. He said, man, when I hear preaching, I want this preaching to affect me so much that I have to get right with somebody. It affects me so much, I know I got to get, uh, get right with God. It affects me so right, amen, I got to get right with my neighbor. It affects me so right so much, I got, I got to get right with my coworkers. I, I got to get right. I mean, if you're getting the water inside of you, it is going to change you. 
But if you don't, all you're doing is like me, driving by the lake and looking at my neighbor's boats and saying, oh, those are pretty boats. Ain't never been on the lake with the boat since I've been there 10 years. I ain't never went swimming in there 10 years. I, I ain't never taken a drink out of Lake Houston. They said, don't know about it, amen. Looks pretty, mm -hmm. but it will not affect me. <coughs> you have to drink it. The heart's smart enough and panning so hard, he is so dehydrated from being chased or from eating or from his activities that day that he must have water. Hmm. He's got to have it. If not, he will die. He will die of dehydration. So there you are sitting in church and you, you know, why did so and so leave? Well, they think well, they was full of water I and mean, there was a water brook over here and there was a lagoon over there. We had a river over here. We had still water over here. We had all kinds. We had water everywhere. We had a water park. I mean, you, you go down the slide, you go everywhere. But you forgot to drink it. Right. So you're the same person. And it has not affected you. It's got to affect you. That's how you know when the water is inside of you. You are no longer dehydrated. And so, the Bible says, he says, I, I'm just like a heart. I have to have water. i got to have water through the preaching of the Word of God. i got to get something that it will affect my personal life, not somebody else's life, and amen in the church, my life. Mm -hmm. It's going to change my attitude. Amen. Amen. I mean, it's going to change my attitude. It's uh, I, I want to read my Bible, but not only is it my as it's my eyes all over the or the water because you can look, you know, uh, we was in Jamaica, you can look down, you can see all the coral fish and all kinds of stuff, and you can see all kinds of pretty stuff. What good is it? A -a -a Amen. <laughs> Lots of pretty words in here in this Bible. Some of this stuff is real good and makes you feel good. And some of it, I mean, it's pretty harsh and it's pretty bitter. Like medicine. What good is reading the Bible if it's not going deep down inside your soul as living water to cleanse you? To take a good inner bath spiritually. It ain't going to help you. No matter how much preaching you have, no matter how much you read your Bible, no matter how much you pray, if you don't have that water inside of you, you can't do nothing. You're going to be the same person you was before you came to church. You'll be the same person, if not worse, when you walk out of church. Instead of being a better person, now you're a worse person. You didn't get no help. You sat Sunday morning and, you know, uh, uh, when you hear somebody profane your name, it's supposed to go in one ear and out the other, don't listen. I mean, if you didn't get no help Sunday morning, I'm sorry. You did not take in the water. You just heard it. Mm -hmm. You stood close by the water and looked and said, isn't that pretty? <coughs> you looked at the Bible and said, isn't that wonderful? Isn't anything wonderful what it says in there right there? It's wonderful. Yeah, but did it change you? Mm -hmm. What good is praying if the praying doesn't change your life? Water, you got to have that water or you will die. You are spiritually dehydrated. And when you're spiritually dehydrated, you are weak. You're weak. You're at the weakest point. Oh, you're walking around and you're talking and you're eating and you're drinking and you're having a great time and living in this world. That's your physical body, but spiritually, you're dying. You're getting worse and worse and worse. I don't care how much preaching you have and how much reading your Bible and how much God praying that you do. If you don't put the words, amen, that living word, and drink it, if you don't drink it, it will not change you. Amen. 
You're just one of them guys that got out of them camps during World War II, and there you are, 60 pounds, and we got to slowly give you a little sip. Mm -hmm. Why? You ain't, you ain't drank that Word of God forever. Oh, you heard a lot of it. We didn't win out the other one. But it didn't go inside of you. So we got to give you a little drink here, a little drink here, a little more drink here. So finally, you can start drinking and eating like a regular person. If not, you'll get overfed and die. Your body can't handle it. That's why Paul says, you know, uh, as, a, as a babe in Christ, you're supposed to start off with milk. You don't feed a baby a, a T-bone steak. Amen. Day one, here you go, eat. And I made you a T-bone steak and a baked potato and I get to eat. Money and nutrients right there. Now you got to give them milk. you got to learn to pant for the water. Where you're so thirsty and you are so dehydrated that you have to have the words of God, the living word, come inside of you. My soul thirsteth for God. What is it doing? It's thirsty. When's the last time you was thirsty for God? I mean, when you was just plain thirsty, I gotta have a drink. I need living water inside of me to change me, change my attitude, change the way I'm living, change the way I'm doing things, change the way my mind thinks. I gotta have that living water to change me. One thing about it, he says, I can tell you one thing. I'm, I'm thirsty. You know, the people that, I, I, that, that, that uh, scare me are the ones that say, I'm not thirsty. You're not thirsty for the Word of God. You're not thirsty for preaching. Mm -hmm. You're not thirsty for praying or reading your Bible. You're not thirsty for wanting to do something for God. You're not thirsty. You're not thirsty at all. There's something wrong there. You're dehydrated. You're so dehydrated, you don't even want to drink water. It's sitting right beside you. You won't even drink it. <laughs> the living word of God, right here. All you got to do is open your mouth. There's a big old waterfall right there. Open your mouth, put the water in. Put the little land inside the lagoon, drink the little water. There's a little water brook, take a little water. There's a river, take a little water. <laughs> Are you going to do it? No, you ain't going to do it. You know what? You ain't thirsty. you got to get to the point where you actually are thirsty before you'll drink. Mm -hmm. If you can't admit you're thirsty, you ain't getting no water. Amen. You'll still be the same cantankerous person that you are now. Why? No water. Mm -hmm. Amen. How's God going to come in and fill you and use you when you ain't got no water in you. It's like, you know, you know uh, do, do, do you know that you have to put oil in the car and keep oil inside the engine? If not, the engine will, will eventually go out. Yeah. It's the same way. Amen? You say, you say, well, it's dirty. Well, at least it's got oil. you got to clean the oil once in a while. Amen? you got to change it. But, but I, I'm just telling you, it's got to have oil. Same thing with a Christian. You've got to have the water. Not just look at it, not just talk about it, not just listen about it, how beautiful the water is, how gorgeous, look at the stream, how it's going, look how clear it is and how beautiful it is. No, we don't need that. We need you to actually just take a drink. Drink water. Drink heavenly spiritual water. You must be thirsty. If you're not thirsty for the Word of God, you can't get nothing. you got to be thirsty. You say, what happens when you get thirsty? Well, if you drink, get a good drink, it'll help you witness. You can talk to people about Christ. And they'll actually listen to you. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, what I'll tell you about the Word of God is a two-edged sword. What does a sword do? It can either operate on you and take out the cancer, take out what's hurting you, or you can use it to kill somebody and stick it inside their heart and deep down their soul and you spiritually have now killed that person. What controls that? Living water. Mm -hmm. You got the living water and you're thirsty for the living water. You got you drinking the living water. Man, you want somebody else. You passing that bottle around here, man. You got to have some of this water. Mm -hmm. Drink up, buddy. Amen. Because if you drink what I'm drinking, you'll enjoy it. Amen. It's going to change you. But unless you drink it yourself, how are you going to pass it on to somebody else? How can somebody else get some help from that water if you ain't going to drink it? you got to drink the Word of God. What happens when you're full and you're full of water? You'll pant after walking with God. Not only will you pant to want the water, you'll pant to be with the water. The living God that created the water. You're going to want to walk with Him. You know how walk God walks? Wherever he wants to. You know what your job is? Walk right beside him. He stops, you stop. He goes left, you go left. He goes right, you go right. Wherever he goes, you go. Mm -hmm. You gotta follow God. Mm -hmm. But you can't do that when you're dehydrated and they have to carry you into church because you're so dehydrated. Oh, you here. Physically. But are you here spiritually? <clears throat> I mean, when you get that, when you're panting after the after God, your soul is panting, you're going to want to bump into God. Ain't nothing like bumping into God. Amen. I mean, just bumping into God, and the next thing you know, you get the hallelujahs. Amen. You're just a praising God and thanking God. Why? Because you heart and your soul were panting after God. Next thing you know, you're hoping, man, I, I just I just hope I'm just praying today, Lord, would you please just bump into me, Lord? Because I gotta feel that touch from the other world. I know you ain't supposed to live on feelings. I know this thing ain't about feelings and everything. But every once in a while I like to feel you. Yeah. I like to feel you inside yeah. my life. You wanna you wanna hear. You wanna walk with them. You want to bump into them. You want to hear from God. And at this point, a child of God, you know what a child wants? They want their parents, their heavenly father, to talk. And they really don't care what he talks about. They don't care. The child doesn't care if the, if, if the amen, the father is saying good things. You're doing a wonderful job, son. You're doing a wonderful thing, you daughter. Or if, the, or if the father gets mad, Hey, you ain't doing this right. You ain't doing it. The main thing is, he's a talking. And all you care about is a child of God. Amen. When you're panting after God is, God, please speak to me. Amen. Mm -hmm. I need that small, still voice for you to talk to me. And, and if I'm doing good, amen, praise the Lord. Amen. You want me to do something? I'll do it. You want me to stop doing something? I'll stop doing it. You, whatever you want. You want to get on to me? Amen, that's fine. Well, I didn't hear from him. That's how you know when you're panting after God. You don't care what God says. You don't care if he repeats himself. You know how many times God will repeat himself in this Bible over and over and over again and say the same thing? You know what? We forget. You know why parent has to remind you over and over and over and over again about certain things? You know why? You forget. Yeah. God, when you're panting after God, you don't care what God says. Good thing, the bad thing. You don't care if he's stepping on your toes. You just don't really care. You just want to hear his voice. My dad is my heavenly father. Amen. <clears throat> he's speaking to me. Isn't this wonderful? Mm -hmm. 
I like that. And I mean, he's a little, he's upset with me right now. I'm the screw up of the family. I'm the black sheep of the family. I just can't seem to do anything right. But he's still talking to me. Isn't that wonderful? All right, all right. Isn't that great? Yes, amen. I mean, when you're panning after God, you don't care if it's good things, bad things. You just don't care as long as He keeps talking to you. That's how you know when you're thirsty. Mm -hmm. When you're panning after that war. Gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. That heart has to have it. That heart would move from pasture to pasture looking for food. Constantly looking. Constantly looking for something to eat. And that deer, he didn't know that water was part of the necessity for his health. He understood it was healthy water. That day they got 50 different brands, 1,000 different brands of water. You know, you can buy now, you know, a, a gallon for 69 cents or a buck, and you can pay $10, $20 for a pot. Just depends on, what, you know, where you want your water from. You know, this one came from a volcano. They had to dig down inside that volcano for me to get this drink of water out here. What do you think about that? <laughs> Tastes like water. You say, is there a difference in taste? Yeah, there's some water I don't like. Hey, Amen. I, I mean, there's just certain water I just don't care for. There's some water I enjoy. I like it. A deer, that heart recognizes I got to have it. And that deer recognizes I've got to have the water brooks. No water, no life. If you could get that deep down inside your soul tonight, if you don't get anything else, mm -hmm. is that I just can't look at the water and take a picture of the water and play with the water and bathe in the water. I actually have to drink the water. Mm -hmm. I got to drink the water. Mm -hmm. There's a blessing. When a heart is bleeding, that cold water will clout up that blood and keep him from bleeding to death. He'll drink that cold water and that cold water will stop the bleeding. And that deer knows that. God put that in him. You know what your problem is? You're bleeding. You've been bleeding internally forever. Spiritually, I mean, I'm, I'm lucky I, you're still alive. You need cold water inside of you or you're going to die because of the wounds of this world. The devil's wounded you, stuck you. You drive by the freeway, you look at some billboard, you watch some movie. You walk into Walmart, I mean, they're half dressed. <laughs> I mean, everywhere you go, you're bleeding. And you've got to have living water to heal up. you got to drink the water. you got to understand you're thirsty. Can I ask you tonight? Don't answer. Are you thirsty for the living word of God? He's thirsty. He said, when shall I come and appear before thee, God? Ah, I'm so fed up right now. I ain't had this water in so long. I, I'd rather just go ahead and die and let me just be with you. Because I ain't had this water in a long time. I'm so, I'm so dehydrated, I'm going to die right now. Mm -hmm. That's how dehydrated I am. He said, I've been crying all day, all night, continually, because people make fun of me. Where is your God? Where is this God that you said was going to take care of you? Mm -hmm. I mean, 
He had to drink the water. God provided the water. Drink the water. Don't just read your Bible and tell me, oh, it's a beautiful book. It's got beautiful wisdom in there. Great instructions. No, that's got to soak deep down inside of you. You got to drink this book. You got to drink the preaching. You got to drink the praying. You got to drink the meditating. You got to drink, 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 drink. Yeah. You got to get that inside of you. You got to get rid of that pain. Not only will the blood clots stop, but the pain that you were feeling from all them wounds will be healed up. Now there you are, sitting at a water park, and a hospital has to come, in, an ambulance has to come and take you away because you're dehydrated. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Right. Amen. There you are, sitting by this beautiful lake, by this lagoon, you know, this beautiful waterfall, and they have to come and rescue you because you're dehydrated. Mm. What's that? If you drink the water, not only will it cure you and heal you up and stop that blood from clotting out and you bleeding out spiritually, it will also allow the pain to quit. Anybody ever cut their finger? Mm -hmm. I mean, burned their finger? You burned your finger or something? And they put it under cold water. As long as it was in cold water, it was fine. It didn't feel nothing. Mm -hmm. As soon as they took it out, ah! Why? He took it out of the cold water. Mm -hmm. Long as you was in the cold water, guess what? You felt no pain. Bless you. you know why you're feeling pain right now? You ain't drank the cold living water. You're talking about it. You're listening about it. You're playing in it. You got your feet all wet. You jumped in several times. You just forgot to open your mouth. Drink it. It will heal the pain that you are in right now. Now, I don't know about you, but every once in a while somebody will say something or do something that will actually hurt me. Yes, I'm a man, so I'm not supposed to tell you, all right? You know, Mr. Macho, you know, nothing hurts me, baby, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> well, in reality, it's hurting. Mm -hmm. It hurts inside. Why? Somebody said something. They should have said. You know what you need? You better, you better drink that water, that cold water, to heal that pain. Yeah. Heal them wounds. If you don't get healed, it's not my fault. It's not the person that hurt you's fault. No, they hurt you. But it's <laughs> your fault for not being healed. Yeah. What was it, our illustration? They're all over there complaining to God in the desert. You know, we got to eat this stupid man. And God just got sick of it. So he sent a bunch of serpents out there, a bunch of snakes. Mm -hmm. Snakes started biting everybody. Mm -hmm. God said, okay. Moses come up there, the preacher, you know, God, please take away the snakes, you know. Uh, you, know you know how the people are. They're a bunch of idiots. You know, I mean, uh, I guess that's the best way I can tell it, as a preacher, amen. You know, they're just a bunch of idiots, a bunch of babies. They have no idea what they're doing. <coughs> you know, they're very insensitive. They're not grateful. They're bad. I know they're bad now. They? But, Lord, they're still your people. Okay, put up a brazen snake, a serpent, put it up on a stick. Everybody that looks at it gets healed. Some people said, what? That's too easy. Mm -hmm. Some people said, I need a doctor. And some people looked and lived. Yeah. <coughs> so there's your water. Are you just going to stare at it and say, boy, that's a beautiful bottle of water out there, baby. <laughs> some good looking stuff. Are you going to drink it? You got to drink it. You got to drink the
the water. It will deliver you. It will <coughs> deliver and satisfy your soul. It will help give you deliverance from your enemies, bring spiritual and inner healing. You're wounded. You're walking around wounded. You ever been around somebody sick? You know what they do? They complain. I'm sick. Yeah. Amen. Especially men. They all act like babies. Yeah. Amen. Every one of them acts like a child. Except for me, of course, you know, I'm the exception. <laughs> You know what the day? You got to get that inside of you for you to be delivered from your enemies. That water's going to help you get stronger, mm -hmm. so that when the enemies come again, he can fight them off. He can help fight them off. Mm -hmm. It won't bother you as much. But you've got to get to the water brooks, and you got to drink it. Amen. It'll help you. Mm -hmm. Psalms of Solomon says, My beloved is like a roe, a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the window and showeth himself through the lattice. You know what happens when you drink that water? You get to see spiritual things. I mean, you get to see things the way God sees the same in the earth. <clears throat> I ain't never seen it like this before. I just said, wow. I, I get it. I understand. Why? You drank the water. <laughs> the water has changed you where you can see spiritually. If it hasn't changed you spiritually, you're gonna still look at everything physically. I just don't understand why you know what's going on. No, no. I just don't get it. Yeah, well that's because you ain't drank out of the bottle. Drink the bottle. Amen, drink that water, and you'll drink, you'll start seeing things spiritually. You see, God moving spiritually. Isaiah 35, 6, Then shall the lame man leap as a heart. As a what? A heart. The deer. And the tongue of the dumb for uh, sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out in the streams of the desert. What happened? Pour water. Where? In the desert. Miracles are happening. I mean, you're there by the cactus. You're looking at the scorpions. You're looking at all the stuff that's out in the desert. And the next thing you know, water starts popping out of the ground. Mm -hmm. Strains start coming up. And you're going, what in the world just happened here? The lame man leapeth. Couldn't walk. Was in a wheelchair. What happened? He drank the water. He drank the water, and now he's spiritually, I mean, jumping around. Brother Rick, he's in Germany. Weimar. He used that verse. He went into East Germany. Back in them days, it was communism. And so he would bribe, you know, they, they, they made a lot of money. Those guys that said, We sink by. Communist Germany. We want you to help us support it so we can continue sneaking in Bibles. Everybody goes, Yeah, I can do that. I can give money for that. I'll help because it sounds sneaky. I don't want to be a sneak, too. I want to help the Word of God. You know what, Brother Rick did? He just brought the guards. He just he worked at a fruit stand on one side, West Germany. He walked over across to East Germany. They said, You can't cross, you an American. He said, well, I got all this leftover fruit. Would you like some? Yeah. And he gave them bananas and apples and oranges and grapefruits and crossed over. 
Then he met a woman over there on that side and bought a house. The woman was selling the house. He called the pastor and said, hey, should I buy this house? It's up for sale. He said, yeah, buy it. They passed another law five years later. No one can cross into East Germany unless they are an owner of property in East Germany and can show residence. He pulled out that deed, copied the deed, and said, here, I own a house. And he leaped over. Mm -hmm. You know what happens when you get full of a man, the water, the living water, God's water, and you get filled with the living water, you will jump like you was lame in your feet, and now you're jumping around for joy. You're singing in the Holy Ghost. Uh, you're running around, you're singing, you're rejoicing, you're praising God everywhere. Why? You drank the stinking water! You ain't, you ain't running around the house and praise God since when? When's the last time you actually did that? I mean, went all over your house and just praising God and putting your hand up in the air and saying, thank you, Lord, for my house. Thank you, Lord, for letting me live here. Thank you, God, for all the blessings you've given me. Thank you, God, for everything you've done. I'm telling you, the only way you can do that is when you get filled, when you get filled uh, with the living water, you see see things. You're in a dry place. I mean, it's a dead church in the desert. Here comes them strings. And you're going, wow. I ain't never said anything like this. And the lame are leaping. My dear. And they were singing and rejoicing. Why? They drank the water. You need a good drink. Some of y'all need a good drink. Amen. I mean, you need to get really drunk on the on the Word of God. I'm not talking about booze. I'm talking about the Word of God. You need to get good and drunk. Amen. You need to start hallucinating a little bit through the Word of God, drinking it up, drinking that living water where you're saying stuff. Did you see what I just saw? I just saw a guy that's lame, can't walk, and he's jumping up and down. And they're singing in the desert. There's people all over the place running around and singing and shouting and praising God. What do you think is happening? Well, they all got a good drink of water. Yeah. That stream came out in the desert, and they all went over there with their buckets and got a bucket full and started drinking. It was good and cold. Good and cold. My soul panteth unto the soul after the old God. My soul thirsts for God. When shall I come and appear before thee? My tears have been my food day and night. Where is my God? Where is my God? He said, my food has been day and night. Where's God? You dehydrated. Where's God? I need him now. You're pretty dehydrated. I mean, you want the water. But you're so weak, you can't even drink it. Somebody's got to take a little cup and give you a little sip. <laughs> There are a lot of difficulties that make us pant after the, after God. Sometimes it's the distance to get to the house of God. Man, it took me an hour to get here. Well, usually it takes about an hour. I spend on the road before church, and then after church, I usually spend another hour, hour and a half. Amen. Sometimes I can. That can overload you for a while. Church is just way too far from my house. Yeah, there's plenty of dead churches all nearby. Hey, man, you can go to one of them. 
Unbelievers taunt you. Mm -hmm. When you get older, this doesn't apply for the young, but for us older people, we have memories of better days. Memories of our youth. We pant for those days. Can't do it anymore like I used to. We pan after God because of the present absence of past spiritual thrills. Man, I just remember when I used to do this and I used to do that and I used to do this and man, I, I did this and I did that and, and man, I mean, we was just shouting and praising God and everything out and, and, and next thing you know, you need another drink. Because instead of it helping you, all it does is bring you down. See, you see in those things as accomplishments that you did for God, now you see them as, I want to do it again. I don't have the strength. You're overwhelmed with the trials of life. There are a lot of trials of life. Amen. Mm -hmm. I pity those that have children now, because it's not like the old days. Now you got to keep an eye on them 24 hours a day. When I was growing up, I'd get home at 8, 9 o'clock. I'd be on my dinner. But I, I, I'm just telling you, we, we live in a whole different world now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes God is slow when we pray in our responses. We want instant gratification. I want to walk direct to the box and say, I'll take a number one, I want the buns toasted, grilled onions, grilled jalapenos, X, I want mayonnaise and mustard, and supersized and milkshake, and then I want to drive, pay for my food, and then the very next drive, I want to take another, another half a minute and pick up my food. I want my food in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Instant gratification. God is not checking the box. Right. Place your order and it'll be done in two, uh, two minutes, three minutes. Ain't gonna happen. Right. So what do we do? We pant. We hear the constant noise of the waterfalls that never stop. We feel the trickle of the rain falling on, on us. And we feel it on us. I'm getting wet. Man, do you feel that? You sit in church and you're getting wet. You feel wet. We plunge quickly down inside the water. We dive in head first, swimming around. Man, wasn't that great? Swimming in the water. I'm going to do it again. I want to see if I can touch the bottom. <laughs> There's times we feel like we're drowning. I got that pool and I got it set up where the, the little things has a current. And if you hit a certain spot, you got to keep pushing against it, pushing against it, pushing against it, or let that thing pull you back and then move to the side. If not, you're fighting the current. This is a very light current, but it's still a current. Some of y'all have been fighting that current forever. You're in the water. But you're having problems in the water. You're diving in the water. You got water all over you. You're near it. Everybody's talking about it. But very few say how great that water really is. Here, try some of mine. And share the water. Sometimes some folks will feel like they're drowning. But the only thing that's going to help you and the only hope that we have is that heavenly water. When you drink it. We are not 
wine connoisseurs that buy $25,000 bottles of wine, old wine, and stick it in the basement and never drink it. It's got to be at a certain temperature. It's going to ruin the wine. So we keep all the wine at a certain temperature. Oh, here's a beautiful, oh, this service was great. I'm going to bottle it up, cap it, type it, put it in the, now I'm going to cork it, I'm going to stick it inside there. But you've never drank any of it. Yeah, but it was a great message. What good is it? You didn't drink it. You didn't take it in. It went in one ear and out the other. You dove in, dove out. You got all wet. You needed a shower after you got out. Can never drink the water. Where the debts are, there's there in God. They appeal to corresponding debts in us. Whatever the debt of our sorrow, desire, or necessity, there are correspondence in God from which full supplies may be obtained. That's F. B. Myers, great author. He's one of them old-time men. The deep of the divine redemption calls for the deep of human need, Meyer says. The deep of Christ's wealth calls for the deep of the sanity of the saint's poverty. That's Meyer. The deep of the Holy Spirit intercession calls the deep of the church's prayers. Again, Myers. He get in there pretty deep. Get in that walk. See things you ain't never seen. Heard, hear things you ain't never heard. See miracles. But before you can do any of those things, you must drink the living water. That's the difference between Christians that get in and Christians that get out. Those that stay, drink. Those that are on their way out, just play with the water. They don't let the water heal them up. They don't, let the, they don't drink the cold water to reduce the pains of life where that living water can heal you up. You get more. As the heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee. My soul thirsteth for God. When's the last time you was just so thirsty for God? He's out. I'm backing away from the table. I'm not going to eat. I gotta have, I gotta have that living water in me. I'm gonna die. My my Christian life is such a mess. I'm just gonna quick eat. I'm just gonna drink water. Cause my life is such a mess right now. My spiritual life is such a mess. You gotta have the living water or the preaching won't affect you reading your Bible won't affect you praying won't affect you your witnessing is inefficient won't help anybody your tears don't seem to help why there's a perfectly good bottle of living water from heaven sitting there. And God says, drink. Drink the living water. And if you'll be like that heart that's smart enough, that it's panting, I gotta get to the water brook. Where you admit I'm thirsty, None of this stuff has happened to me in a long, long time. 
none of this. I don't see any of this happening. I need God. I gotta have that water. Until you do, you are remain the same. Until you become an 80 pound little weakling. Or we have to take a baby bottle, a spoon, give you a little spoon of water, slowly but surely. Until you can drink it. One of those drippers, put a little water in you. Because you're so dehydrated. You don't even know. So the question tonight is, how much water you got in you? I bet you you could probably use another drink. I bet you it would really help if you just took that spiritual water and started drinking it, got in the living water so it could heal you from all them wounds. Take the pain away from the life, how others have hurt you, the world, uh, your family, your friends, your neighbors, your mate, your children, your grandchildren have hurt you. You got to get in that water. You got to drink that water. Or there is no help for you. My job. That's the pastor is to just tell you, drink. We ain't running out. We got plenty. What a sight. Being on the desert and the water just starts popping up. People are walking around that couldn't walk. People are shouting and running around and singing and praising God. Why? Well, they got a good drink of living water. When's that happen to you lately? If it's been a while, <coughs> I'd ask God, would you please give me some water to drink? And I, Lord, I don't know you how dehydrated I am. You may just have to give me just a little bit at a time until I can drink a full bottle. It may take a couple months for me to finally get to the place where I need to be. It may take a year for me to heal it up. Would you help me? Help me to pant. Just like that heart did for the water books. Help me to pant for you. For you to feel me. Because I miss walking with you. I miss you talking to me. I miss you pumping into me. I miss seeing the spiritual thing. I haven't seen in such a long time. Would you please give me a drink? Father, we love you. I pray, God, that you help. Help us tonight to be at least as smart as a heart that panted after the water brooks. Dehydrated hurt, wounded, hurting, you need to find some cold, cold living water. Help us, Father. Not to just get it on us, not for us to just play with it, not for us to just swim in it, not for us to just feel it on our backs and our faces, but Lord, that it fill us inside and give us new life. Fill this church. Fill us with thy living water. And we'll love you and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Your medicine's in that bag, Susan.